Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Alberto Vargas, and I would like to welcome all of you to the, the first of our LASIS lecture series uh, for the spring of 2023. It's uh, my great pleasure to introduce our speaker today, um, Fidel Revilla Arizaca. Uh, Fidel is a historian. He uh, works at the Universidad Nacional San Agustin in Arequipa. Uh, he has conducted uh, research on development in mining communities uh, in the region, uh, particularly in the National Reserve Salinas and Aguada Blanca. <clears throat> and uh, Fidel is going to um, talk to us about the current situation in, in Peru. So welcome uh, all of you and welcome Fidel. You can uh, share your, your screen. Okay, thank you for the presentation Alberto and welcome to everybody. So I will present some slides and talk about the current situation of my country, no? of Peru. And I decided to organize this and I decided to talk about the Peru because the situation is absolutely insane no nowadays no but um, always there will be light of thought no so and uh, the presentation is divided in four parts not in four parts for being being more didactic the first one is about historic historical background not talking about the history of Peru history of the presidents and why we had so many presidents in a, in a short period of time. Later, we talk about the origin of the, of the crisis, of that crisis, the development of the actual crisis, the response of the government and the international role of the other governments and press. And finally, we talk about looking for a solution. No? I propose, or I, or I check another solution that propose people from Peru and another places to try to get a solution no, for that crisis. Also, at the end of that lecture will be some, some question no, about, the, about the lecture. Okay, talking about historical background. No? As a historian, I said, I realized that the, the birth of Peru was very complicated no? because in 1821, Peru declared its independence. And during, during the first, first months, uh, we need the aid from external aid, no, for achieve our independence, no. For example, Don Jose de San Martin, an Argentinian liberator, came here in Peru and he administered Peru during during some months. But he led Peru, um, the administration fell on Suprema Junta Gobernativa del Peru, no, in Spanish, no, and council of, that governed Peru for some for some months, no. Uh, but 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 but. One Peruvian military uh, called uh, Jose de la Riva Güero, and uh, from a gauge of he has uh, he proposed a coup d'état, no coup d'état, and he takes the power, no in 1823. Uh, so in this way, the first president of Peru, that's interesting, no, was product of coup of d'état, no. Our first president is not a fair election, no product of, but. The history is interesting because what happened with the first president of Peru? And the first president of Peru was vacated back by the Congress, no? Oh, well, that's interesting, no? Because our first president is the product of the coup d'etat and our first president uh, was vacated by the Congress, no? And he had to, he went to exile our first president in Guayaquil, Ecuador. The successor was Jose Bernardo de la Torre Tagli, the second president of Peru, but he was deposed by the Congress and died in that prison fortress, no? call it Real Felipe. No? Bolivar, Bolivar was a Venezuelan liberator who came to Peru, accused him of treason. No? For that reason, he re takes refuge, refuge in the Real Felipe fortress and died here. No? Because that's interesting because our two presidents uh, developed a traffic end, no? a very, very, very uh, dramatic end. So, and many people said, what happened with Peru? Why Peru has several presidents in a short period of time? That is a political instability. But that situation repeat and again and again, no? And for that reason, 
I said, an endless crisis, no? or maybe a cyclical, cyclical crisis. No? And for example, and in the 19th century, we had six presidents, six presidents, there's the days, and there are the days for from since 1841 to 1845. Six presidents, no, in four years, no. Agustin Gamarra was a president who died trying to invade, invade Bolivia, no. He went to invade Bolivia and died during the battle of Ingabi, no. Dies in a battle. Later, Manuel Menendez. Later, Juan Francisco de Laos. Gay again a coup d'état. Later, Manuel Ignacio de Vivanco. Manuel Menendez returned to the presidents, and finally we had a little of the stability with President Ramon Castilla, no. Maybe Ramon Castilla was the most important president and a strong president that we had in the 19th century, of course. Later, we had again six presidents in only five years, no? in only five years during the war against Chile, no? since 1879 to um, 1883, we had in five years no? with Mariano Ignacio Prado, he ran away of Peru during the war. Uh, General de la Puerta, uh, General de la Puerta, Nicolás de Pierola, García Calderón, Lizardo Montera, and the final president Miguel Iglesias, who again gave a program, he proposed or he participated in, in a coup de tap, no, to obtain the power in Peru. And that situation repeat. But we arrive to the new to the 21st century. In the 21st century. Also, we had six presidents again in uh, six years, no? In six years, six presidents in six years, no? But why? Because Congress had a lot of power in Peru, no? Congress in this case um, uh, obligates some presidents to renounce and vacate other ones, no? For, for what reason? Political revanchism or economic interests, no? For example, Pedro Pablo Kuczynski is an interesting president. No? Uh, her, her mother is French, her father is German, and he has two nationalities, no? Peruvian and USA nationality. No? In, but he was obligated to renounce by the Congress, no? accused of corruption. Martin Vizcarra was the vice president of Pedro Pablo Kuczynski, but also he was vacated by the Congress in 2020. Later came after Manuel Merino, no? but Manuel Merino and several people didn't recognize the government of Manuel Merino. No? They declared insurrection against Manuel Merino. Uh, Manuel Merino only last five days no? in charge, five days. And he was obligated by the population, by the strength and strike of the population. After two people, young people died in Lima, the capital, the capital, the, the capital of Peru is Lima, the main city. And later we arrived to Francisco Sagasti. No? He conducted a democratic transition um, process and we had Pedro Castillo. No? Pedro Castillo, um, I will talk about him later, but he will won an election, a very, 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 very dispute election against Keiko Fujimori, but he was vacated, no? he was vacated by the Congress again in 2022. No? Um, later, we, we had the presence of Dina Baluarte, our current president for now, until the moment, because the permanence of Dina Baluarte is absolutely difficult no, in the government for several reasons. I don't know, I don't really know how long will Dina Baluarte last in charge. But why? Because Peruvian president has very, very traffic ends, no? And traffic ends, not dramatic ends. For example, in 1872, there was again a coup d'etat uh, by the Gutierrez brothers, no? a group of military brothers who overthrew the president Jose Baltan, killed him to that president, but the population rebels against them, has a very, very, very insane rebellion and killed three of the four brothers, not three. That's it must correspond at that period. No? Two of the brothers was hung on in the tower of the cathedral, no? the Lima Cathedral, no? absolutely terrified. And later in 19, 1914, President Guillermo Billingurs, President Guillermo Billingurs, uh, attend to dissolve the Congress, no? attend to dissolve the Congress. 
but the congressman and decided decided to vacate first, no? And they are legging, that's terming, that's term is absolutely controversial, no moral incapacity, no? In Spanish, we call it incapacidad moral, no? But and they counted on the support of the army, the, the army support the Congress and President Billingur what a side to Chile, no? What a side to Chile. And that situation is very similar to what happened with Pedro Castillo, no? Absolutely. Why? Because Pedro Castillo do the same, no? Do the same. Uh, but 100 years later, no? Well, well with that, I finished the first part, no? The historical background. Now I will talk about the origin of the crisis. And there is a lot of theories, no? What that crisis repeat again and again. But for example, one important thing uh, what we need to review is talk about the Peruvian constitution, no? Of 1993. It's a controversial document, no? Some people support that constitution because they said that constitution allow it to has an economical growth, allow us to defeat terrorism, allow us to Peru integrate to worldwide, but other groups are against that constitution. They said, no, that constitution increased the inequality in Peru. That constitution uh, provide a lot of power to international foreign enterprises, no? But that constitution had a lot of Bad scenes, no? However, I will talk about the polemical article 115, no? 115, because that article allowed the Congress, the capital, allowed the Congress vacate the president, accusing of moral incapacity, no? Um, that term is absolutely complicated. It's absolutely complicated uh, because. There is a no real definition of that, no? Even though high institution, special institutions such as constitutional courts, do not provide a clear definition of what is moral incapacity, no? And that allowed the Congress uh, present several interpretation of moral incapacity and uh, take advantage of that, no? Uh, for example, we had three cases of presidents. Um, presidents that that was accused of moral incapacity, no? First, Pedro Pablo Kuczynski, for example, was accused of has illegal este, business with, with Odebrecht, no? And, and Brazilian enterprise accused of corruption, no? And he was obligated to renounce, accused of moral incapacity, but he belongs to the right, right ideology. Martin Vizcarra, vice president of Pe Pedro Pablo, was accused of the same. He was vacated no, by the Congress, accused of corruption cases when because he was governor of Moquegua no, and, and, city in, and in city in Peru. No? And the same happened to Pedro Castillo. No? He was in Martin Vizcarra belonged obviously to the center ideology, no? center ideology. And the same happened to the Pedro Castillo. No? Pedro Castillo was accused of moral incapacity and they said that he has clandestine or he has secret meetings with enterprise with uh, entrepreneurs with businessmen to get uh, to gain more opportunities to them no in peruvian business and corruption cases obviously and he was vacated again by the congress no we only need 87 87 out of 1 uh, 130 votes no, of the Congress to remove the president. It's very easy if you had a, a great amount of congressmen or if you have foreign an alliance, no? And Castillo belonged to lead ideology. And so what's the conclusion? There is no, this vacation does not occur, of course, does not happen because talking about ideology, that happened but, but because uh, due to economical interests, no, or political revanchism of the congressmen, no, and they prefer the economic interests, or they prefer the vengeance against the other politician instead the stability of the country, no. That's the reality. It's very easy here to vacate a president. No, only need an accusation, 87, 87 votes and two weeks, no. There is a no long term impeachment period. Like uh, USA, for example, no, where another country, no, it's like very, very easy, no, in a short period of time. And now I will talk about 
Keiko Fujimori. No? Keiko Fujimori is the daughter of the dictator Alberto Fujimori. Yes, the same who creates the 1993 constitution. No? And in Peru, it's important to know that in Peru, it sits uh, for, for a candidate to, woo, to win the election, he needs more than 50% of votes. If no one of the candidates surpass that percentage, percentage, there will be a second round, a second election between the two most both candidates, yeah, between the two most. And Keiko Fujimori passed to the, to the second round, to the second election in three cases, 2011, 2016, and 2021. But he lost in three, three times, no? Three times he lost, he, he decided, no? to use the congressmen, to use the Fujimori's party to attack new president, to attack the president who, who the Hitler, no? And to take revenge, no? And the Fujimorism was one of the culprits. The Fujimorism is absolutely bad for the Peruvian democracy, no? For example, in 2021, uh, uh, Keiko lost the election and didn't recognize new president, no? He allegated electoral fraud, no? Electoral fraud. Uh, for example, there is a cartoon, no? Of Keiko Fujimori. It's a cartoon that maybe you can know that cartoon because it represents uh, one of the vandals who assault, no? The, the USA Capitol, no? When Trump didn't recognize as well the, the results, no? And he represents Keiko Fujimori as that person, no? Because he didn't, she didn't recognize the new president. She didn't recognize the result of the election. No, it is absolutely very bad for our, our democracy. And what happened with Pedro Castillo? In October 2021, Congress, current Congress, promulgated Law 31-35-5, no? that decreased the capacity of the president to dissolve the Congress because uh, Three years before President Vizcarra, Martin Vizcarra, and dissolved the Congress, no? Because the president has the, cap the capacity of dissolve the Congress, applying the principle of uh, question of confidence, no? Question of confidence is a legal mechanism that Peruvian president can use to dissolve the Congress. When a Congress in the, in the president can present that mechanism to generate a law to support one minister, no? And if the Congress denied the confidence two times to the president, the president has the obligation or has the power of dissolve, no? Dissolve the Congress. But Congress, Peruvian Congress, reduced the capability of the president, no? To dissolve it. And Pedro Castillo was um, attacked by the Congress again and again. Some people accused of corruption. Some people accuse it of, to be a fool. Some people accuse it to be a communist. Some people accuse it to be a terrorist. And there was a lot of accusation. There was a systematic campaign of demolition against Pedro Castillo, no? from the big media, from, the, from a lot of entities. No? And, and so Pedro Castillo was accused of corruption. For example, that image represents a Pedro Castillo. He's Pedro Castillo in a clandestine way. In, in Pedro Castillo going to the house in Lima, no? We call it in Sarratea House, no? Because Pedro Castillo has a clandestine, a secret meeting there with enterprise, with entrepreneur, with, with businessman, and he tried to get more benefits, beneficials for them, for them, no? Pedro Castillo was accused of corruption and suffered two vacancy attempts. No? The first one in November 2021, and the second one in, 20, 20, 20, in, in March 2022. No? But they both didn't um, get the enough uh, amount of votes no? to vacate Pedro Castillo. The Congress need 87 votes no? or more to vac vacate the president. And what happened with the Peru, uh, current Congress, no? Our current Congress is very fragmented. In Peru, it sits several, several parties, no? Pe political parties. It's very easy, no? To form political parties. It's not like USA, no? To only have Republicans and Democrats, no? In Peru, exists, appear in this, and vanish a lot of parties, no? In the Congress, what's absolutely fragmented. 
absolutely divine, no? And the president didn't have a very strong, a very strong majority in the Congress, no? President Castillo only had, or the party of President Castillo only had 37 congressmen uh, of 130 congress, no? They don't have the majority, no? They don't, uh, to uh, congressmen, no? So, Pedro Castillo, it will be so, um, Pedro Castillo decided on December 7th, uh, 2022, dissolve the Congress, not the dissolution of the Congress. He was in the morning in the public television and read, no? And read the, and said that the Congress will be, um, the dissolution of the Congress, sorry, and the reorganization of many public institutions, no? However, the Congress uh, had a meeting, immediately had a meeting, and the Congress decide uh, to vacate President Castillo, no? with more than 100 votes. No? President Castillo didn't come with the support of the army, didn't come with the support of the police, even though some of the Castillo's minister renounced after that, that message. No? After, uh, so Pedro Castillo tried to escape to the Mexican embassy, no? Mexican embassy because president of Mexico, Mo, uh, Lopez Obrador, president of Mexico was a very, very, very close friend of Pedro Castillo. However, well, in Latin American traffic, especially in capital are absolutely terrible. Pedro Castillo is near to the Mexican embassy, but he cannot advance due to absolutely terrible, terrible, terrible traffic in Lima. And he was arrested before arrived to the Mexican embassy, no? On the way to the Mexican embassy. And what happened? What happened with uh, President, the vice, vice president of Pedro Castillo, Dina Boluarte? So they assumed that they, in the afternoon, so I be become the first woman president of Peruvian history, no? And I will present some images, no? For the government of Castillo, the government of Dina Boluarte now, uh, our current president, for now, no, for now, <laughs> because uh, many people that didn't like Dina Boluarte because he said, if the Congress vacated President Pedro Castillo, I will renounce, I will go along with Pedro Castillo. No? And he didn't, um, he didn't say that, uh, didn't accomplish that promise, no? And so he assumed to the, and after some days, many people, especially here in the South region of Peru, uh, didn't recognize the government of Dina Boluarte. No? For example, Dina Boluarte was born in Apurima. That was one of the first region and declared in insurrection, declared re rebellion against president, uh, new president Dina Boluarte, no? later in Ayacucho. And for example, this is um, weather color and uh, representing the repression of the Peruvian police, no Peruvian army against the population. But a dramatic event occurred in uh, January, no, in the southern city of Juliaca, no, where 17, 17 people were killed by the police and their in insult in one day, in one day, no, people killed by the police and the army, no. That's absolutely terrifying for us, no. And the repression continues, no? The repression continues. May people with more civilian casualties when more civilian casualties occur in cities such as Cusco, Arequipa, Viru, Ica, and Lima, no? For example, this is a picture in the main square of Arequipa, no? My current city, no? And several people protest with um, black and white flats, for example, and represent the um, the Lord representing the pain of, of Peru, no? And another people, also this is another watercolor, that watercolor that I use in the, for the presentation for the banner of this lecture. Uh, this happened in Juliaca, uh, where a, me, a military, um, where a police attacked to a, to a woman, no? And his uh, teenager son tried to defend it, no? Did that happen in the, that happened in Juliaca, no? So weeks ago. And international repercussion. Bolivia, Argentina, Colombia, Mexico are countries that belong to the late ideology, no? They represent late ideology in Latin America 
and they continue supporting President Castillo. They didn't recognize Dina Boluarte uh, as a president of Peru, no? And Peru spelled, spelled the Mexican ambassador. Why? Because the Mexican embassy provides um, or get asylum to the Pedro Castillo family, no? To uh, his uh, wife, uh, wife and their daughter, no? And Peru, and Peru retires their ambassadors from Honduras and Bolivia, no? And what happened in USA, maybe? USA and uh, nearly 20 Democratic congressmen asked President Biden to, retry, uh, to restrict security aid to Peru, no? Because USA gave every year $40 million no? to Peru to security issues, no? And Democratic uh, congressmen from USA as not because the situation in Peru is absolutely um, criminal, not terrible. So many people in southern regions said, "Okay, we protest. They kill and they kill us. They are absolutely bad government. So we need to go to Lima, to the capital, no? And we need to go to the main city of Peru and intensify our protest, no? And many people from all the Peru, especially the south southern region." traveled to Lima and they had research, no research in different places, especially public universities such as such a National University of Engineering, uh, Agricultural University La Bolina, for example, and especially National University of San Marcos, the oldest university in the main university of Peru. No? And what happened there? The police try to get the control of the university. What's an absolutely brutal and absolutely insane repression, no? Because they use armored vehicles to destroy the gates of the university and hundreds of policies enter to the York University, arrest people, arrest students, taking less such like as delinquents. They said that they, the main what delinquents, terrorists, and was a brutal repression in, inside the university, absolutely bad. They didn't re respect the autonomy of the university because, and well, well, in the government was absolutely bad. The government said that try to deslegitimize the protest, not try to deslegitimize the protest, accusing the striker of being delinquents, drug dealers, terrorists, or that they were financed by external government like Bolivia. But the government didn't recognize, didn't recognize the part, no? Didn't recognize that the, they are, they say that they are not guilty, no, of that problem, no? Even though the Congress accused led parties that conspire against democracy, strange right parties, and support the government of Dina Boluarte. For example, this is some police and general police that say that confiscate that shields and said, Red means and uh, terrorism, blood means uh, dead, uh, uh, yellow means joy, and they didn't know nothing about that symbols, no? But they they invented no new theories, no conspiration theories against the strikers. No? That happened no in, in Lima and in, in many places in Peru. But here's something very important. No? What's the role of the press, no? And local press and international press. And in Peru, we had almost a monopoly of writing press because Ruth El Comercio controlled nearly 80% of writing press, no? He's a um, stream, stream right period, no? He's stream right root of press uh, that supports the government of Dina Boluarte, no? And they decided in the cover newspaper to criminalize as the pro protest, no? Focusing in, uh, in on material losses, not in human causality, not in violence of police, not in violence from army, no? They focus on material losses and try and try to say that all protests are vandals, are delinquents, no? For example, this is a um, cover and from December and said, Vandals uh, unleash chaos in Lima and try to assault three airports in different regions, no? for example. But on the other hand, local radios, independent press in Peru and international media shows another phase of the, of the news. No? They 
center focus the attention in the authoritarian role of Dina Castillo, authoritarian government, and uh, in the brutal, insane repression of the police and army. No? For example, there is another uh, newspaper cover. No? For, for example, say, uh, here said, um, network of, of extortion, a collection of quotes, quotas dominate the pickets in blockade. No? The delinquents block the, they said, no? they said, the delinquents block the main ways, block the roads, and they um, is practice extortion there. No? That's it, the, the, the commercial. And another the, uh, newspaper, Peru 21 said, or Peru 21, no? said, El juego, uh, fire is the strategy, no? because uh, they said that all the protesters try to fire no? public and private property. However, let's check what said in international media. No? For example, uh, French newspaper, La Liberación, said that uh, said, present a cartoon no? when they compare. Peruvian geography with the brutal repression. No? For example, they say the mountain chain of police, no? the Machu Picchu of repression, the Titicaca Lay or the state of emergency, no? and the New York, New York Times, no? one of the most important <laughs> newspapers in the world, present in the cover, no? uh, said anguish and disillusionment in Peru, no? and present a picture of the funeral of the people in Juliaca. No? And it's different, no? It's different. Another example, El País, the most important newspaper of Spain said, and the protests in Peru continue after 50 deaths, no? We don't have a democracy anymore, no? And that's the image of the people who, the funeral of people who died, no? In Juliaca region, 17 people in only one day, no? It is another image of the Juliaca city, no? Where there is a lot of people in the main square, no, in, during the protest, during the funeral of the victims, no, of that, uh, this brutal repression, and which, and finally, we had the economies, no, the economies show an infography, uh, show an image representing authoritarian regimes in red color, hybrid regimes in yellow color, and. and Flow of democracies in light blue color and full democracies, no, in dark blue, and check the case of Peru. No, Peru has a hybrid regime, no, and because the economy said that we had a absolutely brutal repression, we had a government that is not recognized for many people, no. For that, re for that reason, in the last inform of the economies, we are a, a hybrid regime, no. And why? Why people are very, very upset with the government, but why people are, didn't support and Dina Boluarte government? Because many of them uh, believe more in Pedro Castillo, or many of them see that he has, he, she is an ally of the Congress. No, he, Congress in Peru has 85 percent of the of disapproval. No, absolutely nobody wants the Congress here in Peru. But there was an inform that appears this week. About the income in Latin America, no inform and um, writing by Latinometric. And check that Peru is the fourth most unequal country in the world, the fourth most unequal country in the world after African countries, no? In Peru, 1% of the population controls nearly 30% of the wealth, no? And here another cartoon when talking about messages of President Dina Boluarte. Because in every message, she didn't recognize their, uh, her role in the protest. She, she didn't recognize uh, as a guilty of the deaths or, or the, of the victims, no? And when she told, they add more and more gas to the fire, no? And Peruvian people, and Peruvian people are every day, they more and more angry against President Dina Boluarte, no? The protests continue, no? Uh, for example, this week uh, convocate so many uh, strikes no, in all the Peru. And we arrive to the last chapter no, of that presentation, looking for a solution. And first we check that survey. No? This survey was conducted in January. And 74% um, of people said that 
president Dina Boluarte will be renounced to the presidency, you know, will be led the presidency of Peru, 74%. So three of all four Peruvians um, support that idea, no? that the Dina Boluarte should be led the government, no? because that is the easy solution for that. No? Because another solution is that the Congress um, advanced the election for this year because Dina Boluarte, in theory, will be governed until 2026, Dina Boluarte and the Congress, but our solution will be that there will be new election for this year. But the Congress didn't, didn't, didn't want that. Why? Because they had uh, interests, no? They had interests, they had lobbies. Also because Congress in Peru is, is absolutely bad. We had very, very, very bad congressmen, no? For example, the extreme right congressmen said that uh, that protest, the protest, the striker are terrorists, and we don't have, or we don't hear the terrorists. And led parties said, okay, we can advance election, but we had the installation first of constituent assembly, no? O sea, we had, so we had, or we need to create a new constitution for advanced election, no? And there is a absolutely fight between left, right, and another group of the Congress, and uh, First solution will be that Dina Boluarte renounce, no, renounce to the president because strikes are continuing increasing in Peru, no. We had uh, six, sixty-five deaths, no, sixty-five deaths until now, no. That's terrible. But and another important change will be a uh, modify our constitution, no. We need to delete, delete the chapter of incapacidad moral because that provides a lot of power to the Congress to and to serve or to provide several interpretation to vacate the president, no? This, this that's carte blanche, no? They provide carte blanche to the press, to the Congress, no? To vacate the president that they want, no? And also we need to review the law 31, 35, 5, no? That try to equilibrate the powers between executive Congress and the legislative, no? the president. No? That will be an important for arrive for a solution for Peru. No? But we need more, more of that. No? For example, like electoral reforms. No? Electoral reforms because in Peru there is no, no serious parties. There is no long traditional parties. No? The parties here are very fragile appear one year, lost the election and disappear. There is a no real political career in Peruvian policy, no? Uh, politic, in, Peru in Peruvian politics. For example, uh, the most of the congressmen of Peruvian leaders who arrived to the, to the presidents, or to the, to the government, since fears in the, their economic interests in this, instead the country's well. That's absolutely insane for that for Peruvian people. Also, we need primary election, no? Because I found my party and I am the only candidate and I decide everything. There is no real democracy inside the Peruvian parties, no? There is no primary election. There is no um, participation from people from different, um, different ideologies. And that's complicated, no? For example, check that, no? This was, there were the parties who presented in the last election in Peru, no? in, the la, in 2021, uh, tw 20 parties, no? compared with the election of USA, no? only two parties, no? Republican and Democrats, no? instead of 20 parties. No? It's more difficult for a Peruvian to uh, choose, uh, for a Peruvian uh, had a, had a very, 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 very clear idea of what party they should support no? with a lot of parties. No? So, also we need a bicameral Congress, no? Our Congress is, has only one camera and chamber, only one chamber, why? Because President Fujimori dissolved no, the Congress in 1993 and create only one camera, only one chamber, no? So we win a bicameral Congress, we had more options, we had a long term, a long, a long process for vacate the president, a long process for impeachment, and also most important is change the attitude of people, no? People in Peru, well, in all Latin America, hate the politics, no? This, all the politics I 
uh, robbers, all the poly type threats, all the poly designer, I need people, and all the politics are the worst of the worst. So need we need to involucrate people with the politics to incur more about antecedent of candidates, to incur much of the ideas of one party and choose with a better decision our future candidates. Finally, 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 there is a picture about the protest. Here is a striker, a protest with a flag that said, I love you, Peru, no? in front of all the policies. So thank you so much for your, for your attention. I can respond some question uh, about this lecture. Thank you so much again. Thank you, Fidel. Thank you for your, your presentation. Uh, if uh, we have about 15 minutes for questions, so uh, you can raise your hand or, or mute your, your, uh, your mic and uh, put a question or put a question uh, in the chat. I think we have a question by Daniela. Yes. Um, hi, Fidel. Um, uh, it's nice to meet you. And uh, let me know when you're here. <laughs> I'm looking forward to meeting you in person in Madison. Um, thank you so much for this presentation. Uh, I don't know how you managed to put all of that in for the minions, it was it was like very organized. Um, I was wondering, uh, there is one actor that you didn't mention in your presentation, and I was wondering what you think um, of them, uh, which are uh, regional governments, right? Um, especially because you're talking about uh, inequality. Um, you're also you didn't talk too much about some of the demands uh, of people in the protest, such as. Uh, more uh, political representation, also more um, cultural inclusion, um, and more access to public services of quality, right? Um, so one of the actors, especially for the last point that I think is crucial, and I, I think we don't talk about too much, is uh, regional governments. And especially because you know their mining communities, I was wondering um, how you think about them uh, in two ways, right? Because at the beginning, with, um, uh, Dina uh, took um, over power, uh, some uh, regional um, governors were having opposing um, positions against the government. So that was like a bit of a chaotic situation, right? And the second one is about the uh, management of funds, right? Because uh, you know that, for example, uh, the most important uh, public services, education and health, uh, they are uh, Organ, um, they are managed by the regional government. So I was wondering how you think about these, um, these actors. Yeah. Thank you again. Okay, I, I can respond right now or respond on answers at, at the end, all the answers. And then... <clears throat> Maybe we can have another question and then uh, Emmanuel, you have a question too, and then you can uh, uh, answer these two questions and then we go to another round. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Emmanuel. Okay. Uh, yeah, I had a question about your idea of a bicameral legislature. Uh, I, I know, like, one of the biggest problems in the U.S. is that uh, <laughs> sorry, that like senators in the U.S. tend to have uh, a disproportionate amount of power, and the voters in the states with like fewer number of people. Uh, tend to have more voting power than those of us with who live in a larger population states. So like, wouldn't having a bicameral legislator lead to those type of problems or how would you construct a bicameral legislator to ensure that every voter has the same amount of power and voice in, con in uh, Congress? Hey, okay, thank you. I will respond to this question first and later that's the next. Okay, and uh, thanks for your um, question, Daniela and Emmanuel. No, and uh, to talk about regional government is important, no, because there are no good government, no, there are no real, you know, they don't use and um, the money of the, of the of the people, no, in a good way. For example, here in Arequipa, there is a little town with only uh, 100, 1,000. 55 people, no? One, about one 1,000 people, but has a stadium of for 
3,000 people. Okay, that's an insane, no? And didn't have um, water, didn't have um, several, several public services, no? And here, here is a no incapacity no, of the government. And yes, that's right. So many governments, especially here in the South, asked to President Dida Boluarte renounce, no? In Arequipa, Puno, Apurima, Ayacucho, even though in Apurima, no? Because Dina Boluarte was born there, no? Even though in, the, in his natal town, government didn't be, believe or didn't want uh, Dina Boluarte, no? And also Dina Boluarte removed, no? The perfect, or removed the, some of the, of the people who was um, in the government before of her because she said, Pedro Castillo put that, um, that administrator, no? And when we retire because they are conspiring against me, no? And all talking about demands of people, well, if that's right, there is a lot of demands of people. Not only the majority wants to Dina Boluarte let the charge, wants to Dina Boluarte renounce, but other people demands new constitution, another little small group demands the liberation of Pedro Castillo, other group demands that the Congress members should be delayed, and it sits a lot of demands, not only from the left ideology, also, also from the center, even though from the right ideology. No? However, Dina Volante said, no, there is an only a little group of bandits who wants that I led the government. Maybe I see that she lived in um, virtual reality, another reality, I, I suppose. It. And that's the problem. And they finally talking about manners of the funds. Well, there is no real manners of the funds. In Peru, there is a lot of corruption case. Nowadays, I realize that Peruvian government, I buy new arms or new products or new gas for the police, no? For, for, for the control that strikes in all the Peru. Talking about bicameral, um, um, bicameral proposed, no? I support the idea why, because Peru is a very centralized country, no? For example, we had 130 Congress, but 30 seats belong from Lima. And there is a region like Tumbes, Moquegua, that only had two, two congressmen, two congressmen. That's absolutely unequal, no? There is a no real decent representation of every region in Peru, no? And I know a way, and maybe that's what will be not the perfect way to, try to fix that situation that an equality inside a region of Peru will be a bicameral question, no? With equal representative of each region in one chamber in a proportional represent in another chamber, no? To try to, and, and to try to steed, no? The centralization in Peru. Well, there is more question. Is there more question? Xavi? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, nice to see you all. Uh, nice to meet you, Fidel. Uh, I wanted to ask you uh, a little bit. Uh, so far, you uh, uh, talked about a lot of the internal problems inside Peru, but you did not mention much about uh, the interference or the from countries from outside of Peru. And I was mostly referring to countries like Cuba, Venezuela, and Bolivia, especially Bolivia, because Cuba used Bolivia as a platform to make uh, internal problems inside Peru using Evo Morales, the ex-president of Bolivia, who was ousted uh, in 2019. And he introduced, uh, of course, he set up his own offices in Cusco. He uh, sent uh, ammunition to create, uh, and even sent personnel, the Ponchos Rojos from Bolivia, to do mo mo many of these demonstrations and uh, so it's not a, only a Peruvian problem, it's a regional problem that comes from Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua. Bolivia is a dictatorship, by the way, even though they manage very well to hide as a dictatorship, I mean, as a democracy, but it is a total uh, dictatorship. And uh, I was wondering why you didn't mention that. And about the... Uh, well, Castillo was, um, the other one was, Castillo was uh, uh, put prisoner. He actually committed a, the biggest crime you can commit in a democracy, which is to declare himself a, co himself a co uh, dictator. When he abolished Congress, the day he was arrested, 
he actually went on television and it was published worldwide that he was abolishing Congress. And uh, that in any country in the world means I am declaring myself a dictator or the only one who can issue orders and issue decrees and run the country now will be just one person that that is me. So I think Congress was in the very right and did the right thing in arresting him because he violated the law mm. and put Peru in the biggest uh, danger of any country at that time in Latin America. Okay, and Luis has another question to respond to Dave Bot. Sure, sure, Christian. Uh, thank you again for uh, your talk today. It was really informative and I apologize. There's some echo in the back. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I, one of the, the questions that I had is, I know you were talking about having this two-party system um, as something that you would like in Peru, and coming from, in this case, knowing how Ecuador is as well, where there's multiple parties as well, um, it, it makes sense. <laughs> uh, but having somewhat understood the political sphere here in the U.S., you know, you have the Republicans and Democrats, and you do have other independent parties as well, but they're not as popular. <clears throat> However, you know, you have a country that sometimes is, quote unquote, sick of having just a two party system. So I guess what I wanted from you is to kind of deep diaper as to why you see a two party system as something you would prefer to have to avoid these sort of issues okay 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 and a ver first to respond Xavi no yes I said no Pedro Castillo was a, he was a dictatorship no because he pronounced or he tries to get a um, coup d'etat no the dumbest coup d'etat of the history obviously no because he tried to be a Fujimori 2.0 because Fujimori is same um, had a uh, and good at that, but he, but Fujimori succeeded. Mm. No? However, and um, there is a complicated talk about um, international intervention. No, see, the mo most people like here suggest that Evo Morales provides the good at that. Some people here said in the southern region, especially when, when I am, that. And the striker are financed by Evo Morales, by Cuban revolutionaries, or even down from Mexican, no? Mexican government. <clears throat> However, the most population, the most population participate in strikes in, because they didn't want the government of, of Dina Boluarte, no? Obviously, obviously that maybe some believe, maybe Puno, for example, no? Juliac is near to Puno when was a very, very massacre. Eh, has a lot of influence, no? And there was a problem, no? Because here in, in, in this region in Peru and Bolivia, Chile and Argentina, we had a flag called the Huipala, no? And some Peruvian government is, no, this is a no real flag. This is a mantle of the table. That is this, then there is a lot of problem because and many, many, Political, many political Peruvian politicians try to legitimize no, the protest, no, alleging in international interference. But from my point of view, and from I said, I realized I participate in some march and I talked with a lot of people from different regions of Peru, and historians, sociologists, anthropologists. The international interference is minimum, no, it's not good, no. But obviously, there is a movement, for example, here in Peru that proposed the independence of the southern region, no? Because southern region is absolutely different, no? From the northern region or from Lima, no? In southern region, we provide, we had more and less ideology. Well, most people had less, less ideology. Most people had indigenous um, uh, ancestors. Most people told native, native language such as Quechua or, or Aymara. And he, some people here, especially in Puno, he belongs or he sees that Bolivia is closest to them instead of Lima, the capital. He said, oh, in Bolivia people, or maybe some Peruvian artists said, oh, in, in Bolivia, the Bolivian people adore us, the Bolivian people support us. We had a very strong relation with Bolivians. Instead in Lima, they discriminate, discriminate them 
in Lima, there are racism in Lima, didn't think in the southern region, didn't think in the rural region, and that is a problem, no? And well, I said that maybe will be international interference, but will be minimal, no? It's not the main cause of the protest, no? Yeah. In Peru. And for talk about the question about or Luis, no? Well, 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 I prefer strong parties, no? Instead, I had uh, several parties, no? Why? Because here in Peru, for example, well, there was a candidate and the people say, I will vote for four side candidate. Okay, but told me about the plan, government plan. 90, 90% didn't read the government plan. And even though some people didn't know the name of the party, oh, what's the name of the party? Oh, I forgot it, but I, but he looks like a good man. He's handsome, he's young, he has power, but that's the problem, no? no it's not, the people here both advocate for personas, for character instead ideologies, instead uh, planned of government. That's a very, very, very problem, not only in Peru, in all Latin American countries. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Well, um, uh, unfortunately, we are running out of time, but um, is there another last question? Alberto. Yes. Norma? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Senor Revilla. I enjoy your cartoons mainly. I just came back from your neighboring country, Colombia where the Peruvian situation is discussed on a daily basis. And as you know, we have also a lefted government now. You are talking about a political crisis. It's a very serious one. And more than that, it's a vicious cycle of which Peru will not be able to come out easily. It seems to me that there is a leadership crisis, both of Congress for whatever reason, and also um, as a whole in the system. I have never seen a constitution in which they, they, they could get rid of a president by claiming moral incapacity. Uh, that's really a confusion of terms. And uh, people forget that Castillo was, go was not going anywhere. He was going from mistake to mistake to mistake. What would be the point as Colombia and Mexico and other countries claim to bring him back? He didn't do a thing for Peru. And now to try to get rid of this lady by saying that she usurped, that she took power arbitrarily I, without giving her the benefit of the doubt to try would be a mistake. The circle and the, uh, uh, the vicious circle will continue forever. And Peru cannot afford it. And we cannot afford it as neighbors. What do you think? Well, such an interesting opinion. <laughs> well, 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 I said, maybe an endless crisis, one cyclical or vicious circle, no? But I think there is no strong leadership here in Peru. No? For example, one uh, maybe in our a stronger leadership in Peru was Alan Garcia, who became two times president of Peru, but he shot him, no? he killed himself, no? he suicidized. But, and I think, but I, like, as a Saturday historian, I wanted to have um, some hope no? that that situation maybe could change. No? Uh, I realized that that situation repeated again and again. And, but I see that we have new elections. We try to incur more of that. I am a professor, no? I try to talk with my student of that. No ideology is my student, obviously, no? but talk about how we can change the situation. And I wanted to have a little light of hope no? of that. Because, well, the normality in Peru is the crisis. No? The normality in Peru, the common in Peru is the change president every very, very, very fast. No? But, we can't arrive, no, because we had some periods of instability, but also we had some periods of democratic government, no. For example, from 2021 to 2018, we have a, a when from 20, 20, uh, for thousand millennium, we had 20, 20 years of stability, no, until the arrival of Fujimori again to the, to the politics, no. But, 
uh, we had that possibility, no? And we need to este, erase that moral incapacity in our constitution. Peru is the only country in the world that only present that moral incapacity in the constitution. And that became from, become from 90th century, no? We, we, in, that thing, in that time, moral incapacity means este, mental illness, no? Mental incapacity, no? But didn't say that because um, that uh, the science, the neurological studies are not advanced in 19th century and that concern that term of moral incapacity, relation, making a relationship with, between moral incapacity. We need to ch several changes in our constitution. Maybe not a new constitution, but we need reforms necessary you know, for change our politics in Peru and try to arrive at um, a better place. No? Thank you, Fidel. Uh, we can probably extend another five minutes and give the floor to Junior, who has his hand up. Yeah, hi. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to say that it's um, it's been a good presentation. Um, but my question is more like, um, for example, um, everybody, when something happens in the country, the idea is the whole government that is not working well. But I believe in those provincias, which are kind of states in Peru, they also have people in those seats that can manage the whole state. So I believe that those guys who are now in that place belong to uh, what party? I think it's coming with Castillo, right? So if we put it in that way, Castillo had been in the government for almost for more than a year. So if people are unhappy in the states and they blame the president, why not just blame the one who is running the state? Because the state is technically getting money from the government, right? From the mining uh, power. So it means that those guys are not investing in the community, in the community. So if they are unhappy with that, why to go to Lima? Why not just go and talk to those guys who are managing the state. And um, something that in your present, I realized in your presentation is, uh, you're, that's your point of view, but I think you're kind of misleading uh, the, the audience because you're not sharing the whole, uh, the whole information. For example, Castillo was vacated because he, he tried to dissolve Congress, that's it. So it's, it's not possible to do that. So why to do that? No, that's illegal. And that is when it's gonna come your dictatorship. So that's why he was uh, uh, kicking out of the, of, of the seat. And now people are going for, uh, we want a new constitution, but they don't know what the constitution have. They don't know the articles. They don't wanna know what to change. And you already said that, look, um, Okay, I'm gonna vote for a candidate. Um, I don't know who this guy is, but in the picture says that, uh, well, it looks like he's a nice guy. So I'm gonna cross this guy and he's gonna be my representative. So if you give it too much power to the people who are gonna be like that, and who is now on the streets going for a new constitution, you know that it's gonna be kind of messy. What do you think about that? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Junior, for your... Uh, uh, for your question. Well, well, well I, mean, I said that Castillo tried to dissolve the Congress, no? So he, he gave a coup d'etat, no? I mentioned several times, no? The word coup d'etat during the presentation, no? Not only by Castillo, no? From several presidents. So, talking about um, why people went to Lima and not, don't go, don't protest in their own region is because Peru has a several problem, no? Centralism, no? For example, in 2020, two guys died, passed away in Lima, two young guys, and the president Merino Renault, no? In Peru, several people died in Andean regions, in, and in mountain chain regions, and no Lima regions, and the president didn't say anything, no? They said it's the cult is the protesters, the protesters killing between them, and they said, Okay, many people die here, and the only solution to the president here us, the only solution that the president sees that that is serious is going to Lima, no? And that's the problem of the centralism, no? Because at that people in Lima import more than 20 people died in Juliaca, for example, no? 
And that's terrible, 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 absolutely terrible. Anyway, well, Castillo was the president was the, in the last year with the less, 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 less the percentage of the election in the fifth round. No? In the fifth round, he only obtained. 90%, no? 90%. It's absolutely bad because another president in the first round, in the first election, obtains 31%, obtains 40%, for example, in Castillo, only, well, only 90% support are Castillo's. The majority of the population support Castillo in the second round, in the second election, because they didn't Keiko Fujimori will be the first woman president of Peru, no? There was a vote against Keiko, not the vote for Castillo. No? And that's the reason because only a little group of people of the protesters or the strikers and support the liberation of Pedro Castillo. Even well, there is the constitution thing is absolutely po polemic, no? absolutely polemic, because many people want to change the constitution, other people want some reform. But the truth is that the problems of, that we had now belongs, or oh, um, the problems that we had in Peru uh, results on the problems of the constitution. No? We need changes, maybe not a new constitution, maybe, no? but we need uh, urgent and uh, current uh, reforms no? in the constitution. There is a lot of articles, and I confirm that the most Peruvian people didn't read the constitution, didn't read, no? or didn't can recognize what article of the constitution defend their rights, no? for example. But we had several politics, lawyers, and intellectuals that had provided better ideas or solutions to modify that constitution. And so we can arrive for a better future no? for Peru. And not only Peru, because Peru, if the influence of Peru uh, will be necessary in all the places. No? The influence of Peru uh, is absolutely important in all the Latin America, no? because Peru is the five most populated country no? of Latin America. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, in that uh, in that note, uh, uh, well, please join me to to thank Fidel for his presentation. Uh, I really appreciate the the sense of hope and trying to find solutions. And thank you very much, all of you who joined us. Thank you, Fidel. Okay. Thank you so very much for the Latin American program and. Uh, University of Wisconsin Madison. I am absolutely happy to came to the university. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. All right.